Are you ready to take the lead in the dance of life? Fall in love with who you are right now and find uninhibited joy every day? Then it's time for you to flaunt your smart, sexy, and spiritual self. Join radio host Laura Cheadle and learn how the five steps of flaunt can help you quit seeking approval, proving your worth, and release you from the judgment of others. Express all that you are, discover your naked self-worth, and finally, enjoy the life you've worked so hard to create. Hello, welcome to Flaunt, Build Your Dreams and Live Your Sparkle. I'm Laura Cheadle, and if you've been listening to my show at all, you know that I am passionate about feeling good. I'm passionate about having fun. I'm passionate about enjoying life and making ourselves the best that we can be, not so we can like look a certain way or be a size two or, you know, impress anybody because of our external um, <laughs> qualification, so to speak. I am passionate about feeling good and fitness and health for the sake of feeling good and being happy and being able to drop into our bodies and love our bodies. And one of my signature programs is the Fit to Flaunt program. And that program, again, is about making yourself feel good. And I so dislike things like diet culture and, oh, you can't eat this and you can't do that and you have to do this. I am way more grounded into health, into science. I've taught fitness classes since 1988. Yes, I'm that old. <laughs> but part of that is because it's health and it's feeling good. And although there's a lot of rhetoric out there about fitness and health and diet, exercise and all of that being confusing, it's really not that confusing. There's a lot of science-based stuff out there and feeling good and getting your digestive system in perfect order is really where it all starts. Before bringing on today's guest, I'm going to share with you a little bit more information about the Fit to Flaunt program. According to Harvard's Health and Happiness Study, the number one way to find happiness is to feel good. And Laura's 90-day Fit to Flaunt program is all about feeling good every day. If you're sick and tired of the unhealthy, unrealistic, and unattainable goals that the diet and fitness industry shoves at us all, then Fit to Flaunt is the program for you. Based on your goals, your body, your lifestyle, and most importantly, how you feel, Fit to Flaunt will change the way you think about health, happiness, and most importantly, yourself. For more information, go to www.lauracheadle.com. That's L-O-R-A-C-H-E-A-D-L-E.com because the program starts soon <laughs> and fills up fast. And we are back. Today's guest is Susan Neal. And what we're going to talk about today with her is sugar, <laughs> carbohydrates, and gluten, which are three kind of big buzzwords out there. And there's a lot of misinformation about sugar, carbohydrates, and gluten. And my goal for today's episode is to really break that down and to give you some factual science-based stuff so you can start making decisions for yourself, not because it's that next diet fad, not because you're going to lose 10 pounds and look great in a swimsuit, but because you want your gut to feel good so you can be happy and healthy for the rest of your life. So with that, welcome to the show, Susan. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Let's start by giving the listeners just a little bit about you and your background and, and kind of what led you to start learning about sugar, carbs, and gluten. Okay. Well, I am a nurse. I'm an RN and I have a master's in health science. And so I was able to, to take that information and put it into layman's terminology for other people to easily understand. How things started for me on this journey was nine years ago when I lost my health. 
So I had 10 medical diagnoses, two surgeries. I was sick for almost two years. And I just didn't know if I would ever get my health back. It was one good day and three bad days and two good days. And the doctors could only do so much for me. And it takes a long time for your body to heal, but you have to figure out what it is. And then you have to do the things that are appropriate to do to help it to heal. And after two years, I was, I was healed. And so I just have a real big uh, part of my heart that wants to help others improve their health and weight. So that's how I got into writing um, healthy living books. Wow. And, and I'm also a, I've also a uh, yoga instructor and I have been since 1997. <laughs> I like it. So you and I both started when we were toddlers, right? Yeah, yes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Okay. So let's kind of start at the beginning there. When you say you lost your health, I think there's some, probably some listeners out there thinking, um, I've always been healthy or I've never been healthy. And I just kind of want to know what you, what you mean by that and how that impacted your life because health is something we all take for granted. I don't care who we are. We take it for granted until we lose it or we're injured or we're sick. And then we go, oh, wow. I wish I would have appreciated that earlier. That's so true. So true. I, I had no idea how blessed I was. For 49 years, I was healthy. And then I had a um, tooth that had a cavity and needed a crown, and it ultimately abscessed. And I went back to the dentist a couple of times. They'd take x-rays, didn't show anything, and we didn't know. And uh, it was like a month after that, I started having two periods um, a, a month. And that lasted for 15 months until I had surgery to remove two uterine polyps. Two months after I had the problems with my tooth, I started having depression. And I started craving chocolate. Ah. It was the sugar. It was the Jared Deli chocolate with the caramel in the center every night. And then a month later, I uh, was diagnosed with an ovarian cyst. So the doctors put me on progesterone cream for that. A couple months later, it was adrenal fatigue and a hormonal imbalance. So I had to start on adrenal fatigue vitamins. And I was taking the ones, Dr. Wilson's vitamins, where it's three at a time. Well, I had to take that five times a day. So that was 15 adrenal fatigue vitamin pills a day. Then another month later, I started having flashes. Uh, when I turned my head sharply to the left, it was a hole in my retina that I didn't know. A month later, it was diagnosed and they would not let me leave the, you know, ophthalmic, you know, office without having laser surgery because holes in your retina, it's what um, leads to retinal detachment, which is one of the leading causes of blindness. Yeah. A month later, they found out about the abscess tooth, and uh, it was actually draining fluid down into my gastrointestinal system. I had to have an emergency root canal, and I was put on steroids as uh, as well as antibiotics that wrecked havoc on my gastrointestinal system. The next month, it was low vitamin D, low iron. I mean, I was a train wreck. I, I could barely get like out of bed. If yeah. It was so difficult to just get up and manage and just try and care for my family. Uh, so it wasn't till I went, I tried some different alternative therapies such as massage, acupuncture, and I uh, did a colonic uh, irrigation because I knew something was wrong with my gastrointestinal tract and my stools had changed. So a colonic irrigation is like a royal enema. And what they found, the therapist found that uh, it was loaded with candida 
which is yeast. So I had an overgrowth of yeast in my gastrointestinal tract. So I went back to my internal medicine doctor and he's like, I don't know how to treat that. He, he didn't know what to give me or anything. So I had to investigate. I had to read. I had to figure out. And I went on an anti-candida diet, like it's no sugar um, for no wheat, no white rice, no white sugar, very, no fruits for eight months. I had to take an anti-candida cleanse. And after that eight months, finally my adrenal glands were restored. The candida was under control. I got my normal appetite back and I started coming out of this fog of the loss of my health. Wow. That's a big journey. Okay. Let's dive right into the sugar. Um, actually, no, no, no. Let's, let's talk first about the digestive tract, just so listeners are all on board. Digestion is the way we assimilate nutrients and what we eat matters because literally we're building our cells and we're assimilating that stuff. And of course, what you take in is going to make a difference in how your body looks. And I think we all get that, but it's also so easy, I find, to lose track of that and to be like, you know, like you said, ooh chocolate and let's have a little bit of wine with that and let's have some cheese and oh it's a birthday let's have a cupcake and ooh chocolate covered strawberries it's so easy to know it and then to just live life anyway because food is also fun but like you were saying with the candida what we eat does matter and whenever our body goes out of balance it can wreak havoc on our whole system. And it's really important to sometimes, like you were saying, doing the cleanse and just reset your system. So with that, let's talk about sugar because boy, do we like our sugar. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What yes. does sugar do in the body? Talk a little bit about that if you could. Okay. So what it does is... When we have sugar or wheat, both of those foods, the brain receptors in our brain, the same ones that opiate drugs go to, uh, those receptors release dopamine. Dopamine is that feel-good hormone. So there are different habits, you know, opiate drugs, cigarettes, uh, sex, uh, sugar, it all goes up there and the dopamine is released and it gives us our, our feel good hormone. So we like it. It's wonderful. And, but unfortunately it can become an addiction, just like an addiction to opiate drugs. So what a person has to realize is, is, uh, they want to realize the root cause of inappropriate eating, of craving of sugar. I was craving chocolate. Uh, I was craving sugar. It was candida. So in my book, Seven Steps to Get Off Sugar and Carbohydrates, I've defined like the four root causes of inappropriate eating or craving that. So you need to determine, okay, is it a candida infection like I had, or is it a sugar addiction? Because if it is a sugar addiction and you understand that and you realize that, then you can say, this is setting me off. Uh, my focus is narrowing. I can't think of anything else but this thing, but you know what? I'm going to step out the door. I'm going to go walk just a half a mile down the road and just a half a mile back. It's not going to take very long at all, but I am going to get my dopamine like that. I'm going to go take my dog for a walk. I'm going to play with my dog or hug my kid or hug my partner because dopamine is released in those positive ways as well. So we can manage it once we understand what is happening to us. I love that you use the word root cause because as a former attorney, that's what I was always trained to look for. Look for the root cause. What is the root cause of the accident, the situation, whatever it is? And unless we know that, you're absolutely right. We can't figure out what's really going on. And the difference between a sugar addiction and feeding the candida, you're absolutely right. They both manifest in a craving for sugar, but it's for an absolutely different reason. 
absolutely different reason. Now, what about, um, cause I know people oftentimes will say about this, the difference between fructose and glucose and sucrose and the different kinds of sugars and how, how does that, how does that change or is there a difference and what do listeners need to know about that? Because sometimes people will say, well, I'm eating fruit, so that's good sugar, right? Well, it's much better than white table sugar. Yes, absolutely. But you want to eat, if you, if you know you have an issue like I did, or if you have a food addiction, then you want to avoid high sugar fruits. So Basically, the low sugar fruits are berries, any kind of berry, a slightly green banana, not the ones that are yellow with the black spots. Those are high sugar. Slightly green banana, uh, a really, really hard pear, not a, not a ripe one, a grapefruit, so uh, um, a f- not real ripe oriental persimmon. And so you want to avoid the high sugar fruits of the melons and the grapes and the peaches and nectar. You, you just, it's unfortunate, but if you have an issue, you want to avoid those. Mm-hmm. Okay. You said something that I kind of want to point out. The difference between ripe fruit and slightly hard fruit and that sugar and the way we digest and the way things process, it's a chemical reaction. It's science. It's not just kind of made up frou-frou. Oh, there's sugar and there's not sugar and you shouldn't eat this. This is science and digestion and the metabolic pathways. This is all science and what we eat and when we eat it and all of that stuff, it does matter. So listeners, please think about this in terms of like that chemical reactions, things that are happening in your body that will make you feel good or feel bad. Now, what about speaking of science, other things that we eat that are converted to sugar? Oh, that is the processed food. So you do not want to eat food out of boxes and bags. So I... I, I don't go by a prescribed this kind of diet. I, I make things very simple. You look at your food and you say, did this come out of a garden or uh, the farm? Or did, was this created by a food manufacturer? Does this baked potato resemble something out of the garden? Yes, but the potato chips do not. So don't eat them. Eat as close to the garden as possible. And, and just make it simple. It's not. So just avoid the center of the grocery store. Don't go in the center aisles with all those boxes and bags. Stay with the fruit and the vegetables and, uh, you know, the meat and uh, the, the Greek yogurt. I get the kind that is non-dairy. And so that's a helpful hint. No, thank you for that. No, what about carbs? Everybody's counting carbs these days. Talk about carbohydrates and and the relationship between carbs and sugar and what all that does in your system. Okay, so what happens scientifically is that when we're eating white flour, we're eating white rice, it's been stripped of its nutrients. All that's left is the starch. And we consume that and it's delicious and the dopamine is released. Well, guess what? It turns right to sugar and our blood sugar and our glucose, our blood sugar goes up and that causes your pancreas to have to release insulin to bring your blood sugar down to a normal level. And then sometimes, you know, it produces too much, a little bit too much and you plummet and you're just feel lethargic. How about when you're just blood sugar just, just dives down because that Uh, you know, after you've eaten something really sugary and you feel good and then it plummets down, well, then what the body has to do is it has to release epinephrine. Uh, And so with that, that's like the fight or flight syndrome uh, hormone that is released. And that causes anxiety. 
okay, when we have this epinephrine then release. So we're, we're, the sugar is causing our body just havoc. And when I researched this, I was like, oh my gosh, is this why we have so much anxiety in our world today because of the sh high sugar consumption and then the up and down of our blood sugar and the different hormones that our body has to release to counteract it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I know this just because <laughs> it's something that I've been interested in. There's so much sugar in stuff that we're not even aware of. I, I love ketchup. I am a ketchup fiend. I will have French fries just to have ketchup. I will eat the same French fry. Just keep dipping it in ketchup. I love ketchup. And then at one point I started researching ketchups because I thought, okay, I'm getting healthy. I'm doing the organic it's very difficult to find a ketchup that is just smashed up tomatoes. Most of them have some sort of sugar and it was like, I don't want sugar. It's the tomato flavor that I like. And then I started for a while trying to make my own ketchup because there is so much sugar in ketchup. So just a little side note for listeners out there, pick some of your favorite foods and just take a peek at the sugar content. Because even if you're not ready to make the whole step to eating, and I love what you said, but like eating closer to the garden. Maybe you can even just take many steps along the way and start finding some foods that are at least closer <laughs> to the garden. And, and what I do is when I look at the packages, I always make sure it has less than 10 grams of sugar per serving. So if, uh, and I always had my kids do that too. They're pulling out whatever off the shelf and I'm like, okay, how many sugars does it have? So we didn't look at carbs or whatever. We always just looked at sugar because that's just the real culprit. And it always had to be less than 10. And so if something had 20 grams of sugar, I'm like, okay, well, you can only have half a bar. You have to wait the next day to have the other half. <laughs> so they choose something else. And if it was 12 grams of sugar, I was like, that's fine. That's right. Oh, that's a great tip. Thank you for that. That is a great tip. Now, another thing that I'm curious about, because I'm sure some listeners are out there thinking, okay, you had a health crisis and you kind of had to reinvent this and do a whole big thing to get yourself healthy. And I'm sure some listeners are thinking, ah, I'm willing to do some, but I still want some. How, how do you balance it? Because like that tip, 10 grams, that was great. How, how do you balance healthy eating for somebody who has maybe never had a health crisis, but who is interested in preventing one? So in, in my book, Seven Steps to Get Off Sugar and Carbohydrates, I talk about the 80-20% rule. 80% 80 of the time, eat well. If you don't eat well 20% of the time, you know what? That's probably a lot better than what you've been doing. So you want to give yourself grace. You want to give yourself permission occasionally, like it's Valentine's Day and you're having the chocolate covered strawberries. Well, just get the dark chocolate covered strawberries because dark chocolate's healthy for you. Or just, just understand where your limits are because with some people, once they have one bite, that's it. They're eating the whole thing, the whole tub of ice cream. So you have to understand yourself. And if you can just have a little slice of whatever dessert, go right ahead. But if it's going to trigger you, then stay away from it. Mm. You know, that's great advice because you're right. There are some foods that just kind of trigger us to absolutely lose our head. And I'm just going to throw this out there too. Alcohol, <laughs> sugar, and alcohol yeah. And when we have a little bit of alcohol, it does lower our inhibitions. And then we do become much more likely to overeat or to eat the wrong foods. Yes. And I'll tell you, when I had the candida infection, candida is like a monster growing inside of you and you can't stop it. It's, it hungers. It loves alcohol. It loves sugar. It loves white uh, you know, wheat, wheat flour. It just loves, you know, all those delicacies. And I couldn't control it. 
And so I had to understand that I had it and then take control of it. And so I developed a quiz to help people understand if they might have this. And it's at candyquiz.com. It's C-A-N-D-I quiz.com. And you can look at all the symptoms to see if you believe you may have an overgrowth of candida in your gut. Because what happens is when we are given antibiotics, and most of us have been, we were never trained to re-inoculate our gut, our gut with the good probiotics afterwards. So, you know, I'm a nurse and never, ever trained to do that. Never had a doctor say, be sure and take a bottle of probiotics after you finish your antibiotic to make sure that we get the good bacteria in your gastrointestinal tract back in balance so you don't have an overgrowth of the bad bacteria. Thank you for that. And also, I just want to dive in on this too. Some physicians, some medical people (laughs) do not believe in candida. And it is my guess that that's fine. (laughs) And it's my guess that you might run into somebody who says, oh, that's not really a thing. I would encourage you to take this quiz. I don't care if somebody believes in it or not. Check out the symptoms. If you have the symptoms, does it matter if somebody believes in it or not? Take the steps, cleanse, and see if you feel different. Because to me, the proof is always in our bodies. I don't care if you believe in strep throat or not. If you've got the symptoms, (laughs) you've probably got it. So take that quiz and just find out for yourself if you've got it or not, and then challenge yourself to do some of the steps that are in this book and see if you feel differently. Now, speaking of seeing if you feel differently, let's talk about gluten because that's another thing that sometimes people will say, oh, that's not really a thing. Either you're celiac or you're not, but there's no such thing as a gluten intolerance. So talk to me about gluten. Okay, there are actually four different type of gluten-related disorders. The first is celiac, which is an autoimmune disease. The second is gluten sensitivity. The third is wheat sensitivity. And the fourth is a wheat allergy. Each one, each one of them is, is diagnosed differently. For a wheat allergy, you go to an allergist and you have the skin prick test on your back and to see if you have an allergic response to wheat. Celiac disease, you have a blood test and a large proportion of individuals with celiac disease, the blood test will be positive, but some of them it is not. And then you have to have an upper endoscopy to go in there and look. Because what happens with celiac disease is the body actually goes after the wheat to to kill it and harm it. And at the same time, it harms the inside of the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. And it flattens these little hair-like projections called villi that assimilate all of our vitamins and absorb all the nutrients from the healthy food we eat. And so you go in with an endoscopy and they look and see, oh, yes, it has flattened areas. Then that is the gold standard for diagnosing celiac disease. With celiac disease, I want to let you know that it has increased 400% in the past 50 to 60 years. Wow. Now, the other two are gluten sensitivity and wheat sensitivity. And those are, that's really difficult to diagnose because there is no specific single diagnostic test that has been yet invented or created to diagnose um, gluten sensitivity or irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. Both of those diagnoses are rule out. Well, it's not celiac. It's not this. It's not that. So you must have IBS or 
try going gluten-free and see if it helps. And if it does, you are gluten sensitive. So does that absolutely oh. make sense? And you know, I'm I'm just gonna share this with our listeners um, out there. My son has got some sort of gluten wheat sensitivity. We don't know because we haven't had the medical tests, but what we do know is within 24 hours of not eating gluten, the feeling in his joints changed significantly. He used to have uh, the dark circles under his eyes because he had a hard time assimilating um, iron. That all went away. So again, we're not exactly sure what it is, but we just tried it and it was fairly instantaneous that we knew. So again, for listeners out there who might be thinking, I'm just not comfortable, I feel bloated, I don't feel that healthy, but I don't have insurance. There isn't a test, so I can't do anything about it. There's a lot that we can do for ourselves in just having that elimination diet and experimenting and seeing how we feel. And if you do suspect that you do have a gluten-related disorder, it's really uh, beneficial to be tested for celiac disease via a blood test first. Because if it's celiac disease and it's an autoimmune disease where it harms your own body, then you really need to know that because you don't want to have a drop of gluten because the more gluten you consume in your life, if you have celiac disease, like the longer you go, the higher the chance is that you're going to get a second autoimmune disease. So Hashimoto's, Shrogan's, diabetes, those kind of go along with the celiac. Absolutely. So, and in my book, Solving the Gluten Puzzle, there is a test that you can order and do at home without a physician's order. And you just order this test and you can determine whether you have celiac disease or not before you go off of gluten. Because if you have been off of gluten for over three months, then when a blood test is done, the gluten antibodies would not show up because it goes away. Your body quits fighting and releasing gluten antibodies. So it's important to be tested first. Oh, so good to know that. So where can listeners get either or both, you know, of your books with gluten, with sugar, where can they find out more and pick up copies of these books? They can go to my website, Susan U. Neal, that's N-E-A-L dot com. It's online uh, at Walmart, uh, at Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, most stores. And I also created another quiz for you that you can take to see if you think you might have one of these four types of disorders. Because like for celiac disease, there's over 200 symptoms. For gluten sensitivity, there's over 100 different symptoms. No wonder it's so hard to diagnose because it, it looks like it could be any other sort of disorder. So if you go to glutenintolerancequiz.com, then you can take the quiz, look at all the symptoms and help determine whether you think you might have a gluten-related disorder. You could print that out, take it to your physician, ask to be tested. Perfect. Now, we started the show talking about you having that health crisis, losing your health. You went through a whole lot. Now you're feeling better. Now you've really learned, you have processed, you've cleansed your body. Um, you really, really, really did a lot. But how do you feel differently now than even before losing your health? I, I feel fine, but it, I, I, it's never gotten back to the 100% prior to 
you know, when I turned 50 and had all those medical diagnoses. You know, I might be in the 90s, but it, it's not like it was back then. But part of it also is because uh, I am either wheat or gluten sensitive. And I was diagnosed, I, I've known this for a while that I just avoid wheat because the next day I have so much brain fog mm. and, and I'm just so tired and it's like, I just avoid that stuff. So I have ever since my health crisis nine years ago, but last year I had a stool test and the stool test finally showed that I had gliadin antibodies. Gliadin is the protein in wheat. Oh. So I and so it was in my stool. So in other words, my body is, uh, you know, attacking the gluten that I consume. And it's hidden in so many different foods that I have to be so careful because last year also I had a, uh, uh, the ENT found that I had some nodules on my thyroid and I had a, ultrasound, I have seven nodules on my thyroid. Well, that's very close to getting Hashimoto's thyroid, uh, thyroiditis or autoimmune disease, which is very much linked to gluten sensitivity. So even though I don't have celiac disease, it's very important for me as someone with gluten sensitivity to not eat gluten because I don't want those thyroid nodules to grow uh -uh. and for me to get Hashimoto. So I have to be very careful. Wow. The interrelatedness of so many things, the way our bodies are symptom, the way everything is connected is just fascinating. And I'm really looking forward. I've, lo I've looked through some of your work, but I'm really looking forward to going deeper and to learning more, you know, just for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my clients, for the world, because there is a lot of misinformation out there. And I want to thank you for pulling it together in such a non-alarmist, medically supported way. So thank you for that, Susan. Oh, you're so welcome. Yes, I just, I hope other people can find healing. I mean, today, Americans, 50% live with a chronic illness and 40% suffer from obesity. I want to help those individuals to live a vital life and our bodies were created to heal. So if we figure out, like for me, I have to make sure I stay away from gluten because I want my thyroid to heal. I want those nodules to just disappear and go away. And that's the way our bodies were created if we know what to do. So that's why with my books, I try to get to root causes. You figure that out and you work on that issue. Once you work on that issue, like for me with the candida, once I got rid of that, I got my normal appetite back. I wasn't eating Gerardelli chocolate every night anymore. Right. <laughs> Which is so good because I think sometimes people think, mm, I don't want to do this because I'll be depriving myself. Well, if you're not craving it, you're not depriving yourself anyway, and you actually feel better because it is cyclical. The better, the better you eat, the better you feel, and the fewer cravings you have anyway. Right, right. Yeah. And, and in, a, in a section of my uh, book, Seven Steps to Get Off Sugar and Carbohydrates, I have Curb the Sweet Tooth. It's in the back. And it has all my like really great tactics. So one of them is I, I enjoy chocolate. And you know what? Dark chocolate is beneficial. It has lots of health benefits. So I melt a bar of 70% chocolate. I pour in a bunch of nuts and seeds and I make these mounds like cookies and then I just put it in a Tupperware container and that's my afternoon snack. Gives me a little bit of caffeine. It's high protein. It's just a tad bit, you know, not real sweet, but it's, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. And another one is to get a green apple. Green apples are low in sugar. That's another great low sugar fruit. And you slice that up and you slather it with almond butter. Oh, I oh, love that. It is delicious, delicious. 
And then another one is to get a Greek yogurt, either dairy or non-dairy, add um, unsweetened coconut, slivered almonds, and berries, raspberries, blackberries, sliced up strawberries. Oh my gosh, that I just is like, it's my ice cream. That's delicious. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There are so many good, I was going to say alternatives, but if you really think about it, they're not alternatives. They're our primary food. Like you were talking about close to the garden. These are our primary foods and we just get used to not eating them. And then once we start eating them again, we realize how stinking delicious they are. And they're so much better for you and they actually taste so much better. So I'm excited to check some of those out. That makes me happy. (laughs) I want to shift gears a little bit so our listeners can start knowing you, Susan, as a person knowing you for you, not as somebody who, you know, is an RN, who had a health crisis, who's an author, who's done all of this, but just as a wonderful, sparkly, fantastic person. And to do that, we're going to kind of go through the five steps of flaunt, which are find your fetish, laugh out loud, accept unconditionally, navigate the negative, and trust in your truth. So, I define fetish as anything that you do that just lights you up. Like when we're kids, we play for the sake of play. We don't play because we want to get better at something. We don't play to impress somebody. We play because it's fun. What are some of your fetishes? What are the things that you just love doing? Well, I love to garden. So I just planted, and I have a fruit orchard, I just planted two apple trees, two blueberry, two pear, I have all sorts of fruit trees, and beautiful flowers in the garden, and I just really enjoy getting out there, being close to nature. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I wish I was better at gardening. And part of that is living in Colorado. It's dry and arid, and it's challenging, but that... it. That sounds fascinating. I love that. (laughs) Now, what about laughter? What role does laughter play in your life and what makes you laugh? Well, I always taught my kids, don't take life too seriously. You have got to laugh. So I remember one time I was I got all dressed. I had a preschooler and a toddler and we're all dressed, ready to go drop off at preschool. And I pick up the toddler and I walking out to the car and I I feel something on the side of my waist that's wet. Oh my gosh. She had a stinky diaper. It went all through her clothes. It went through my clothes. Oh my gosh. Oh, I, I just had to laugh. It was just hysterical. We had to go back and start all over, all over again with the two of us. Oh. <laughs> and from that point on, I just, I mean, when there's a crisis, I'm just like, oh my God, you know, I just, I laugh. It's yeah. just hilarious. And, and I said, okay, yeah, this happened. Yeah. It's, it's, but we have our lives. Nobody is harmed. We're not dead. It's okay. We got the flat tire or whatever it may have happened, but we are okay. Yeah. So <laughs> laugh. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you on that. Now, what about when you felt really bad? Because for me, it's very difficult to find humor when I hurt and when it's bad. And you spent quite a long time with quite a serious, you know, a health crisis. Do you have any tips or tools that you can share with listeners that you use to help find humor, even in some really dark times? Well, I don't know if it was quite humor, but it was contentment. I would just, so much in life is attitude. So I would switch my mindset and say, you know what? I just didn't feel, I just have to stay in bed today. But you know what? I can get out that book that I've wanted to read and I get to lay in bed and have a day off and just read. Or guess what? I can watch TV today. When do I ever just get to lay around and watch TV or I get to watch a movie? So I would kind of like turn it around instead of in my head of, oh, instead of, oh, poor me. It was, look what I get to do. I got a vacation at home. (laughs) I love that. There's so much wisdom in that. And that, that kind of goes perfectly into that except unconditionally, which is the golden center of flaunt. It's so much 
easier when we just accept unconditionally the way things are, and then we can move into it and then we can manage it instead of fighting against it all the time and wishing it was different. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So what about you for accepting unconditionally around diet? Because I think some listeners out there might be thinking, well, you have to do it, but I don't have to do it. So, you know, I'm playing that game with them. I'll, I'll eat it this time. Well, I, I can just eat a little bit here and then pretty soon it snowballs. Do you have any advice for accepting unconditionally that your diet matters and being brave enough to step into healthy eating and healthy living? Well, before last year, I would probably once a quarter eat my the most favorite dessert, which is tiramisu, which is dairy, which I'm lactose intolerant and <laughs> take my <laughs> lactate pills. And it's wheat, which I know it would give me brain fog, but occasionally I would. So, but now with my more recent uh, diagnosis of gluten sensitivity and my thyroid nodules, I'm not. So I'm not sure if I'm answering that for yeah, you. Yeah, you are. Because I think you've accepted that it just doesn't work for you and that you and your health are more valuable than how long does it take to eat a dessert? Two minutes? Right. <laughs> right. And I want my health. I don't want to have an autoimmune disease and all these other additional symptoms that you get with that and all the doctor appointments. And so... I've chosen, you know, not to eat wheat anymore. And I'm very careful. And yeah. like today, I went out to lunch with a friend and I asked if they had any gluten-free salad dressings and they didn't. And so I had no salad dressing on my salad. And in fact, most recently, it hasn't come in yet. I just ordered this week little individual packets of gluten-free salad dressing so I can bring them with me because you wouldn't think like salad dressing or toothpaste or chapstick or, you know, all these different things contain gluten. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy when you start looking at the list. Yeah. I like that. And also to me, what you were saying and what I was hearing is once you accept unconditionally, I think it's easier because then you set down that fight. You set down that argument with yourself that when can I, when can't I? And you're just like, I'm not doing it. And here's what I'm going to do to take care of it. I'm going to get myself some little individual salad dressing packets. Bam. <laughs> it, it becomes easy when you truly accept unconditionally that that's the way it is. I think so many things are only difficult when we're unable to accept. Right. Yeah. Right. And then that moves into that next step, navigate the negative. And I just want to hear some of your wisdom and your take on navigating the negative, not only, you know, in regards to your health crisis or the exploding diapers, but just, you know, philosophically. <laughs> Let's talk about life and how you manage, because if you're anything like me, life is filled with twists and turns and unexpected events. And I would just like to hear some of your top tools for navigating through negative, difficult times. So like I said before, it was the laughter, have humor, but then look at your blessings. Okay. I had the flat tire, but you know what? I didn't get into a car accident. I didn't, I wasn't stranded on the side of the road. I, I did have a cell phone. I could call, like I got help. Okay. I was late to the conference because of the, the, um, flat tire, but I did not miss the whole thing. I was just an hour late. It's okay. It's, you know, life, don't take life so seriously. Yeah. Yeah. That is so true. We get so worked up about things and it's okay. <laughs> it is. And yes. then the very last question is T, trust in your truth. And I was hoping you could share with listeners who you are inside not as a mom, not as an RN, not as a health advocate, but just who are you at the depth of your soul? 
who am I at the depths of my soul? Well, I am somebody who is enthusiastic and energetic, and I'm very driven and motivated. That's why I've written, I've written seven healthy living books, a lot of resources. I've uh, created Christian yoga DVDs and yoga books, and I'm a mother of three gorgeous daughters. They're all becoming adults, and it's so much fun moving from the mother-daughter in the home to your friend who is also an adult. And so that's a wonderful experience. And I thought about a little bit more about the, the last one, the negative that you said, navigate oh, yeah. the negative. And what I would say about that is like, I had the bad experience of losing my health happen to me. Now I've had the, the gluten sensitivity as well. So I'm turning those negative experiences into benefits for others. So the things that have happened to me like that, I can then use, I have a heart for individuals who have lost their health weight, have a gluten-related disorders, and then I'm creating resources for them to help them. So I've navigated the negative by making a benefit from it for others. Yes. I love that. And you are prolific in, you know, your books and your yoga. And then part of, part of kind of this whole part and parcel, yoga and the Christian yoga, yoga, what role does both faith and yoga play in your overall health and well-being? Well, when I had the major health crisis, I clung to this verse that was interesting because it was nine months after that tooth, you know, started going bad. It was my 50th birthday and I got a plaque from a friend and I was so sick. Oh, I was so sick. And I clung to this Bible verse from Isaiah 40, 31. And it says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And I just clung to that verse and that message that someday I was going to recover my health and I was going to soar like an eagle and I was going to walk and not be faint. And it happened even more than happened because now you're enabling other people to do that. And to me, that is the greatest gift is to be able to share that wisdom and to lift others up and empower them in the ways that we've empowered ourselves. We will be right back after these messages. According to Harvard's Health and Happiness Study, the number one way to find happiness is to feel good. And Laura's 90-day Fit to Flop program is all about feeling good every day. If you're sick and tired of the unhealthy, unrealistic, and unattainable goals that the diet and fitness industry shoves at us all, then Fit to Flaunt is the program for you. Based on your goals, your body, your lifestyle, and most importantly, how you feel, Fit to Flaunt will change the way you think about health, happiness, and most importantly, yourself. For more information, go to www.lauracheadle.com. That's L-O-R-A-C-H-E-A-D-L-E.com because the program starts soon <laughs> and fills up fast. And we're back. Susan, thank you so much for your bravery, for having the courage to I don't even want to say endure this journey, but to travel <laughs> along this path to stay positive, to connect with others, and then to put it all out there and share everything that you have learned to really lift everybody else up. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. And I will put all of your contact information in my show notes. And you have a website that people can go to to learn more about you. Yes, SusanUneal.com. I'm also a health and wellness coach. I'm a certified coach. So if anybody wants uh, a, uh, some coaching, it's available there on my website. 
Perfect. Thank you so much. And listeners, if in case you're out driving and you can't write that down, you can always reach out to me and I will pass on Susan's information. And that's Laura Cheadle, L-O-R-A-C-H-E-A-D-L-E.com. And again, they will be in the show notes. Listeners, have an amazing, health-filled, happy, passionate week. And as usual, don't forget to flaunt. Tune in next time to Flaunt. Build your dreams, live your sparkle with radio host Laura Cheadle every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Overcome the need to please and find the uninhibited joy of being exactly who you are right now. Come find your fetish, laugh out loud, accept unconditionally, navigate the negative, and trust in your truth. Find out more and get your free gift at lauracheadle.com. That's L-O-R-A-C-H-E-A-D-L-E dot com.